I'm not sure whether we've talked about it much, but Matt and I rode the epic Taiwan KOM Challenge back in October. And we did so on two very special, super lightweight bikes. And given how much we suffered in spite of them, it was just as well we had them. On those bikes were ALM saddles made by Fabric. Now, they're a relatively new brand. They were launched in 2014. And that was actually the first opportunity I'd ever had to ride one. First impressions, aside from the ALM being super lightweight and a nice place to sit, was that the design of it was significantly different from anything I'd seen before. And so fortunately, the Fabric HQ is just a 45 minute ride away from GCN. And so we're gonna go and meet the boss and find out a little bit more about the brand. Heads up, tunnel. Here we go. You, uh, you did remember my trousers, didn't you? You did. Okay, you got my trousers. All right. Ready. Uh, We're gonna have a little look around. Yeah, Nick. Hi, Simon. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. So this is Nick, who's the founder of Fabric. Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm exciting to have you here. Show you around. Show you what we do. Not many people have been here, so it's good to good Fantastic. to show what we're what we're up to. So do you want to come on up and see see uh, see what we do? See how yes, works. please. All right. Cool. So here we go. This right. is where all this is where it all happens. The first group of people to introduce you to is Anthony, Rebecca, Hi. and Ian. Hi. And these are our industrial design team. And as you can see, they're working on all sorts of. Uh, Crazy bits and pieces, some of the things are concepts, other things are things that are ready to go to production. I'm not going to lie, I can't actually work out quite what that is yet. And Can you tell us? <laughs> you... Yeah, it's a, it's a bracket, handlebar, handlebar bracket. Oh, I see. Luggage. So that's it there printed in 3D. Cool. That's it there on the screen, just making some changes. So one thing that people don't know is that later this year we're bringing uh, some new sort of saddlebags and luggage to market and that's what for is always working on at the moment. Our first exclusive of the day. We have product managers, so this is Logan. Um, he actually, these guys basically turn the ideas into reality. They, they work with the factories um, and they, they turn all of the ideas that we come up with into actual products. This is Stephen uh, and he's another product manager and he works on uh, lights, you can see that. So you can see all the loom arrays on, on the table there. This is, uh, this is our graphics department, not everyone's in today. Right. They do the website, all the advertising, all the point of sale, everything that um, makes the product and gets our brand out there and people to see it. So everything from what happens in the shop, what you see on the website, all our Instagram feeds, all social media, everything's done here. And then this side, this is uh, the sort of the commercial side and the marketing side. So Neil's uh, events and um, marketing, sports marketing manager. Ben's in charge of making sure we sell tons of stuff everywhere. Uh, <laughs> so come on into the office and we'll uh, show you give you a bit more detail about how we work. Cool office, I like it. Right, so I'm hoping you can talk us through the design process of actually a new saddle, which technically no one's seen yet, have they? But before we do, can you give us a bit more info about fabric? So aside from the saddles, what else do you make? Uh, we make a whole range of different products. So we do lights, we do tools, we do pumps, um, and we're working on all sorts of different categories. But the key thing with fabric is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify areas of the market where we could be different by design, but also how we manufacture the product um, to bring like real advantages to the customer, as it, as it were. So that kind of explains why you went, hey, you know, we make Blooming Good Saddles, let's make multi-tools yeah. because there's, there doesn't seem like there's that kind of you know a link product wise yeah. and certainly design wise there must be two completely different yeah. things to do. I mean we break innovation down into two things one is design so yeah. how we can be different by design but also I think innovation is the way that you make stuff and a lot of stuff in the bike world has been made the same for 30 40 years especially in the areas where it had huge benefits to the to the rider. For me anyway, there's, there's quite a lot of kind of almost heavy industry, heavy materials and saddles. So for example, the ALM, which is the one that Matt and I used in Taiwan. Am I right in thinking that you start out with 3D printed titanium for that when you Yes, so the ALM had a, a specific idea in mind and I 
wondered whether or not it would be possible to get the comfort from the rails. We know that titanium rails flex, we know that carbon rails have a degree of flexibility, but no one had really looked at how you could construct it so that the rails became like a leaf spring. So I actually went to some carbon engineers and said, could we make the whole saddle in carbon? And most people said no, which I felt was a good challenge. So my objective with the ALM was to make a carbon saddle that looked like other carbon saddles that are extremely uncomfortable, I would say, to majority of people because they've got no padding on, yeah. but get all the comfort from the rails. We've got a, a range of different tools downstairs from a, almost like a design technology workshop where we can, we can sand and we can make clay and we can do things very much by hand. And then we have uh, a whole host of 3D printers that all do different jobs. Cool. Um, can we go and have a look? We can do that. This is our um, kind of uh, what we call our industrial design, but it's our dirty workshop. There's no 3D printers in here. This is all very hands-on. Um, this is also is where we keep all of us, where we work on all our secret projects. So only four people in the office um, uh, are allowed in here. So the three industrial designers, and obviously, um, hopefully, my fingerprint will work, <laughs> and, we'll, and, and we'll and we'll be able to go in. Awesome. Don't be shy. Come on in. So we're going to talk you through. Um, a product from start to finish. And this is right. a product that's, um, that's likely to come to market. It might not necessarily. So these two saddles here are production um, line saddles. And, they, right. and this is um, the narrow version, which we started with. This is a wider version. So as in that's narrow for someone with a narrow bum? That's right, yeah. So what, we, what we've realised is that there's also um, an opportunity to e go even wider. Saddles are going through um, lots of different um, trends happen, come and go. What I really like about a wide saddle is it's a greater surface area, more surface area, more surface area, more contact uh, distributing the weight where you're sitting on the saddle is obviously going to be a more comfortable saddle. Yeah. Uh, Ian and I have an idea of what we want to do, but the first thing we would do um, is we would start by uh, modelling that up in clay. So it's, 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 all, it's automotive um, clay, it's what they used to, to do um, car bodies with. So it's, you see, it's really soft at, uh, kind of, uh, at the heat of 58, which is kind of where it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, and then when it gets to room temperature, you'll feel that it goes a lot harder. Again. Okay, yeah. So, it's kind of different from traditional clay, you kind of work backwards almost, you don't yeah. bake it. So then it goes back to the screen and Ian will model it on, on screen and then that is a very quick process between making it on screen and then starting to 3D print them out. And then we have three different types of 3D printing that I can show you. I think it's probably best to go see the 3D printers. Look at these. So this is um, our bank of 3D printers now and each, each 3D printer has quite a different and specific role We've got a printer here called the MakerBot, and this prints the ideas that you saw on the computer screen. We get something that's like this, that's very rough, but it is still showing us what the thing's going to look like, yeah. um, and it gives us an idea of how it's going to feel, and this also enables us to quickly go back and change things very rapidly. It's quite cheap to print, as I said. And then we all go, actually, there's a second printer that is able to print the models to a much higher quality, so this is one like Ian made earlier of what the saddle's more likely to so look like. So that's a 3D print. So this is 3D printed. No. Um, it's still in pieces as you can see. And this is something that, that, so that we can really visualize what it's gonna look like. It's also a really good sales tool. So this obviously is an expensive product to tool up for, for injection molding. Yeah. So when we make something like this, this isn't the best quality it can be and I'm gonna show you one at the very highest, the highest quality that we can make but this is a much better visualization of what the product's gonna look like, how it's gonna feel, and, and also this is kind of perfect thing you can put on a bike, see how it looks, and yeah. have a really good idea of what it's gonna be like. So as an example, this is a model that's actually off this 3D printer, um, and it's been sprayed up next door in the spray booth, and this is a printout of the product. You can see it's a bit rough now because it's been battered, it's a couple of years old. And you can see how accurate that actually is to the final product. So this is a production saddle and Correct. how accurate that is and how close it looks. Yeah, that's pretty. You have to be careful because the rails are obviously printed as well. Sorry, didn't mean to break that. This is another 3D print. So you can see how that's amazing they can look. So this is a cell saddle, a different saddle that we make. No, it's probably one of my favorite 3D prints. Even the rails are printed in, in, uh, on the printer. So you've got to be really careful with it. Wow. 
Um, if I had a top five things that are 3D printed, this would definitely yeah. be in it. That's amazing. Now, Nick has just been called off for a meeting, so I thought we'd come and have a little look around the warehouse space, because there are some absolute gems in here. So as you can see, most of the bikes are charge bikes. This one up here is a personal favorite. This is like a Vans collaboration. I just think that's wicked. A 29 of BMX, amazing. And then further down, I guess you've got bikes that people are actually riding to work. Again, there's some pretty nice ones. Yeah, I've always wanted like a cruiser BMX and there's a few knocking around that you think, well, that might, not like I could do anything on a cruiser BMX, you understand, other than cruise, but. Yeah, check it out. Stir me out to a group set. More skin wool tires than you can shake a stick at. Right, so we've just come back upstairs uh, to actually talk through the next step of the process, hypothetically, which would be manufacturing, right? So this is our 3D printed prototype. How do you then go about getting this made? I mean, obviously you make lots of saddles, so I guess you have a factory that you use. Yep. We would then start working with the factory to turn that into a drawing to make a tool and then to produce the product. And we have a couple of different tools we have to have. We have a tool for the cover material, yeah. this is why it's all in separate pieces, a tool for the plastic base or nylon base or carbon base, and then a tool for the rails. And each thing costs uh, money to invest in those tools. Significant investment in this, tens of thousands of pounds to start to make this product. So it's important that we know that all of the ideas we thought about are actually going to turn into in, into sales. Now, there's one last thing that I really want to ask you about. It was that trainer factory. Yep. And this is the saddle that gets made in a trainer factory. Correct. So what's cool about this saddle is that by using the technology that's in shoes, this saddle, if you put your hand on top of it, it's really hard. But when you get to the points, the pressure points of the sit bones, these things deflect. And what's great about them is these little pyramids um, are basically the same softness all the way through their travel. So what you have is you have a saddle that's really supportive where you need it to be supportive and then where the pressure points are it's softer than foam. And then the final thing with this is that it's completely airtight so when it hits the bottom of this travel it's cushioned by air. Well Nick thank you so much for taking the time to talk us through the design and manufacturing process. You know my, my overriding impression from, from walking around and, and seeing the you know, the wide variety of charged bikes that you make and then, you know, everything from 140 gram one piece carbon saddle to like an air sprung saddle. It seems like you have or you've given yourself quite a lot of creative freedom. So I'm really interested to know what comes next. What, what's next for Fabric? What's coming next for Fabric? Well, I can't tell you everything that's coming next for Fabric. I can tell you that the saddle that you've seen is probably likely to be in production. You've seen a, a few tips of other things that might be coming, luggage uh, later this autumn. And one of the things that you're going to see more of in the future is I'm also motivated by making sure that we're environmentally sensitive in the way that we approach those products, whether it's how long they last or, or their, their recyclability and things like that. That's absolutely at the forefront of what we're doing. But in terms of new categories, we're after all the new categories. I'd like to look at every single one. And we will only rule them out if we truly believe we can't be better or have an advantage in those, those areas. Well, I hope you found that as fascinating as I have. Not only a bit of insight into fabric, the brand, but also into how a product is designed and then ultimately brought to market. Do make sure you give the video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And if you want to watch another one right now, how about checking out the factory and headquarters of Tektro TRP over in Taiwan? It's pretty nuts.